What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I hope training is going exceptionally well for everybody. Everybody's being productive, getting lots of work in, improving. Today we are talking about the left roundhouse kick of Miracle Krokop. We want to talk about why he's so exceptional with this and if he's doing anything noticeably different from other competitors which allows him to be so successful with this kick. So guys, let's get right in to this power strike. I've known about Miracle Krokop from way back when he was competing in K1 and Pride and he was always somebody who went, oh man, this guy is just somebody to look up to. His striking is just so beautiful. And I was fortunate enough to be on a Glory kickboxing card with him when I won my Glory contender title, which gave me the shot at the Glory title. He was actually the main event, I believe, on that card. So that was very cool to see him around, to see one of your idols. And I'm excited today to break down this left round kick because in all honesty, before right now, I hadn't really gone through and been, okay, what really makes this kick a little different than everybody else's? So guys, let's jump right into the first point of five. All right, guys, the first thing I want to talk about is the angle of his kick. Very often, especially if you are sort of a more traditional practitioner, you're taught to bring your leg up. When I say traditional, I mean karate, a karate practitioner. You're taught to bring your leg up and to bring it straight across, horizontal. Now that means that if the guy's hand is up here, it's very hard to get over top it. His hand has to be down here for you to get across. But when Miracle Krokop throws his kick, it's coming up on this angle. And you'll very often see him land the kick, hit the guy, and then the kick continues to sail through and goes higher and higher until then it eventually maxes out and starts coming down. So the difference being most people when they throw their kick, they'll come up and across this direction. We're pushing through. But for him, he's coming up and then his kick sails through. And in my opinion, this just makes the kick a little bit more powerful because lifting and coming across is not gonna be as fluid as just letting your leg soar up and completely over. It just seems like that would be a more natural motion which should give him more power. Especially when he's not aiming to the target, he's aiming completely through the target. The target's just here, but he's aiming way over there with that upwards motion. So what you can do, if you're wanting to try and execute kicks like him, I mean, if somebody's holding tie pads, if I'm holding tie pads like this, and you get that upwards angle, there's a chance, especially if you catch the top, that you're gonna flip through and hit your partner in the forehead. So you're better off using a pad like this, where instead of him holding here, and your partner's head's behind you, just have them hold like this, and then you can kick and follow through, or you can get one of those karate kicking pads. Oh, they're called paddles, a kicking paddle. You can also use those, have somebody hold, and then you can just practice coming right through on that different angle than you might be used to throwing with. Next up, guys, number two, I wanna talk about his aim, where a lot of people aim for the jaw or they aim for the ear. It looks like he almost aims for the top of the head, and in my opinion, that makes it more likely to land, especially in MMA or with the bigger fighters because they are notorious for keeping their hands a little bit lower. If you aim at the jaw, it's going to be very hard to get over that hand. But aiming up to the top of the head is going to make a world of difference for low arms and especially with MMA gloves. You don't have to worry about catching a forearm. So when you guys are trying to target or you're trying to note what Crow Cup does, be very aware it's not here, but he's coming up there right up to the top of the head and most likely striking with his shin although he does land with his foot as well so i don't think you need to be too concerned about what part of your leg is striking it's just more the fact that you are targeting a little bit higher and with that angle that we already talked about the upwards angle it makes sense that he's coming up there because coming to the jaw with my upwards motion it just doesn't work as well we want to be able to lift up and come straight through. Next up guys, and this is a big one. This is a big technical point, which a lot of people don't do. He chambers his leg for a very long time. So let's talk about what that means. If I lift my leg up and it's, look at how far my heel is away from my bum. That's not a massive chamber. If I pull it right in, that's a full chamber. But if I extend that chamber out very early, it's not gonna have the same snap. Most of my power is coming from my hip and my leg just lifting through. That's a little bit more Muay Thai style. His is a little bit more karate style. He keeps his leg chambered to the very last moment. When you see it in slow motion, it's kind of like up, 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 
and then shaboom, he comes through with that snap on top of that massive leg. We have to keep in mind that Krokop's thighs are enormous. So he's already generating lots of weight with the size of his leg, with his hip motion, and then he adds that snap in, that little pop, and oh my gosh, extra power, people are just gonna fall. You guys can work that easy. Just remember, you know, you're throwing your techniques, you're banging away, heel comes right to the bum, and then I start extending just before my knee lines up with the target. This is too late, this is way too early, we want somewhere in between, right around here. My whole leg's coming up, and then I extend to maximize power. Next, and very interesting, because in my opinion, technically incorrect, we're looking at what he does with his arms. If I am in a southpaw stance, I would teach people that your hands are up here, if you're kicking with your left leg, your left arm whips down, of course. But the right arm should stay right to the head. But what Krokop does is his arm comes out very, very early. It eventually starts to pull back, but he throws it out to the side before the other one. So he ends up kind of in a splayed arm position where he has both his arms out. Now, there is a reason he can get away with this, and we'll address that in a moment, but one of the big things I just wanted to show you was that arm positioning is different. Tosses his arm back, this arm here comes back, and then he worries about the other arm after to gain a little bit more hip power, but this is something that a lot of people might not have noticed, they might not have tried, because very often, just like I said, I teach right to here. I teach to here because we're worried about that opposite round kick coming and knocking us out. But if we quickly move on to point number five, we are talking about what his head does. A lot of times when people throw kicks, head right above the foot you're standing on. That's what I would teach, that's what a lot of people do, but you can also get away with throwing your head backwards. And because he throws his head backwards when he kicks, he gets it to a safe distance where the arm positioning, which we already talked about, me throwing my arm down here, it doesn't matter that I'm not defending my face, because I'm leaning back. And the leaning back is gonna help him create that height that we already talked about when we're aiming up to the top of the head. And it might even help him gain a little bit more power because he can throw his hip forward with that extra force because his head is leaning back. These are interesting points. Not all of them make for a technically perfect kick, but he pulls it off, it works very well for him. And you guys can try and implement little things that I mentioned today into your own kick and see if they work for you. And these are all unique little things that are a little different, I mean, Remember the pivot. That's always a super important thing. The foot you're standing on needs to turn. Krokop's turns, he goes 90 degrees. Somebody like Bokau, if the toes are pointing towards the screen, he'll turn them away from the screen when he round kicks. Big twist to the toes, but Krokop goes 90 degrees, which is still opening up his hips a lot. Those are just basics which you guys should already be doing if you're doing a proper MMA, kickboxing, Muay Thai round kick. So there we have it guys. When I broke down Krokop's kicks, those are the five things that I noted. I hope something in this will help you in your training, help you improve. If you guys appreciate the content, appreciate the video, please give it a like if you haven't already. Join the channel and get subscribed. Help bump me up to 100,000 subscribers. That is gonna come very soon. I can feel it. Everybody's showing me so much love. I really appreciate it. Guys, train hard, and I'll see you back here soon for another video.